We are live. Hey, for everyone on Instagram Live, we're going. I'm, I'm doing this live from um, Facebook Live. So if you want to jump on and be able to actually see what I'm doing on the screen, I would recommend jumping on um, Facebook Live because otherwise, this is not going to make much sense to you um, watching right now on Instagram. Yo, Emlyn, how you going? What's up, everyone? Rowan, Connor, Emlyn, Ben, how you going? So if you've read the description, uh, it would be great to get a gauge of um, who's, who's, who's joining for the first time tonight and who joined us last Wednesday for the lesson. Um, so, def, so post a, a shaka if this is your second, if you, if you joined us last week, and, a, um, and a, a one, the one emoji, if this is your first, less, first time doing Music Is Easy, that's going to help me with um, kind of going over what I should cover for tonight. So this is, um, well, yeah, this is episode two of Music Is Easy. Um, the whole purpose of Music Is Easy is basically just to... Uh, prove to everyone and show to everyone that you can make music too, regardless of your musical background. Um, whether you've played an instrument before or this is your first time using any form of music instrument. So, you know, Ableton Live is very much a musical instrument. We can create drum beats with it. We can create melodies, um, piano stuff. We can even record our instruments to it. So it's like a, it's basically like a studio in a box, a studio built into your computer full of uh, tools that you can create your own, yeah, create and record your own stuff from scratch. So it's like, it's like having all of the instruments all in the one, you know, soft, all, all instruments, including, you know, drum, drum kits and, and pianos and synthesizers um, built into your computer and also, um, like having a tape machine as well that can that you can actually record everything to from you know whether it's your your built-in microphone on your computer or if you want to plug in a microphone or a guitar you can do that too and we'll cover how to do that stuff in in future sessions um hey connor what's up ali olana let's go let's do it um so yeah just for everyone on um on instagram right now just jump on jump on um Facebook Live because uh, you're actually going to be able to see what I'm doing. So I just thought I'd jump on Instagram Live to, to let you know that we're live on Facebook. So you can exit this, jump on the link that's in our bio on Instagram and uh, yeah, and come join us on Facebook. You can actually follow along if you want. So I'm going to I'm going to end the, the live stream on um, Instagram now because I don't want to chew up all the all the bandwidth, I guess. But yeah, see you on Facebook Live. Cool. All right. Um, yeah. So this is completely unscripted, like last, uh, unlike last week where I had a few notes of what I was going to cover. Um, this is all off the cuff. So we'll see how we go with this. Um, and yeah, if you feel, if you want to stop me at any time or ask any questions, let me know, feel free to pop it in the, in the chat and I'll, uh, get, get back to all of you, uh, tonight. Um, I've got a second screen tonight. So if the, if you tuned in on Wednesday, Wednesday night, I, I was kind of bouncing between my phone and my laptop to be able to see what was going on. And uh, yeah, so I've got a second screen. So if you do have questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. So um, yeah, if you're, if you're new to uh, music production or this is your first time tuning, tuning in tonight, just, just post like a, the one emoji. Um, 
and yeah, let's just get going. So as we covered last week, there's two main types of two main file types we need to understand to know how to make music on a computer. Uh, one of those file types we covered last week is called MIDI. Another file type we didn't cover last week, but I gave a brief explanation is audio. So as a reminder, audio is um, uh, or the audio file types, what we're doing with audio tracks. So on my Ableton screen here, we can see two audio tracks here. Um, and these audio tracks are basically for either working with pre-made um, samples. So you can bring in pre-made samples and loops um, and uh, yeah, just kind of chop them up or just use them as is. Another thing you can do with audio tracks is you can record instruments and vocals directly into them. So I'll give you a really quick demonstration now of, of what that sounds like. So I'm gonna go to my audio preferences in Ableton Live. So that's command comma um, on, a, on a Mac or control comma on a Windows. Otherwise you can go options preferences on Windows um, or file, I oh, know, sorry, live preferences on a Mac. So yeah, live preferences. Um, this brings me to the audio track here. Um, oh, sorry, the, the preferences and we uh, wanna be in the audio settings here. Um, and so I've got my audio output device, which is just the headphones I'm wearing right now. And I'm going to use the, change the audio input device to the external microphone that's built into this. I, you can also record directly to the internal microphone built into your laptop. Um, and there's plenty of people who record to um, record, you know, with their built-in MacBook microphone. So Gautier, um, I watched a, a documentary on, on kind of like an interview slash documentary on the making of his album that somebody that I used to know was on. And he actually talked about one of the uh, songs. He, re he was on tour or something and he didn't have access to a high quality mic. So he decided to record the vocals just with his um, inbuilt Mac MacBook microphone just to get the idea down so he didn't forget it and had the intention of kind of returning to studio afterwards and, um, and recording to uh, a, a better, you know, with a proper studio microphone. And, and after he did that, he, he recorded to the studio microphone and he decided he liked the character of the, the laptop recording better. So he just stuck with that. And so this is a really cool thing about making music these days is that, you know, once we, once upon a time, it was all about trying to, trying to achieve the highest quality, best sounds possible. And, and that's when, you know, music was, um, was really reserved for the elite. So like the top musicians with, you know, recording contracts and big record deals and access to multi-million dollar studios. So it was all about trying to achieve the cleanest, crispest uh, kind of music you, ca you can. And, and there's still a little bit of that around today. And it definitely, uh, you know, when digital music making uh, using software doors such as Ableton Live in front of me became a, became a thing, um, it was, you know, people were still like, oh, how do I, what's the best quality microphone and stuff. But now these days it's, it's kind of cool. Um, what people are challenging that it's like, why does everything have to be, you know, super crisp and polished and high quality. And, and that's when, you know, you know, you jump on SoundCloud and listen to a bunch of really popular stuff there. Even on Spotify, there's, there's a lot of really popular music out there that really challenges those, um, traditional, um, kind of mentalities of work your music that everything has to be super, super high quality um, stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna use my um, external microphone and I'm just gonna close this. And then now hopefully you'll see that in my external microphone, uh, in the audio from, so in the audio track here, I've got audio three and I've got my little inputs and outputs on and I can see audio from external in and the input one there, which is this microphone right here on my, um, on my headset. So these are III headphones and they've got like a little microphone built in, which is cool. So I'm gonna turn that on and you can see that it's picking up my voice and uh, then I'm gonna hit the record arm track, uh, sorry, sorry, record arm button. And this is gonna get it ready for recording. And then I can just simply record it to one of these empty available um, clip slots here. So I'm gonna record an audio clip Cool. And now if I double click on the clip, so I hit spacebar to stop recording that then. Um, if I double click on the clip, you can see that it's actually recorded my, um, 
my, my snap. So I'm going to hit play on that. So that's pretty cool. Um, it means that we can now record vocals, um, clicks, uh, instruments if we want as well. Um, so there's a lot of really cool ways that you can record audio directly straight into, into Ableton Live. Um, whether that's with you know one of these microphones, your built-in MacBook microphone, um, or if you want to use a, an audio interface. But that was just like a little taste into working with audio in Ableton Live. Uh, we, we'll, do, we'll do some future lessons on recording and the tools that you need for recording. Um, if you want to record you know, yourself singing or playing an instrument or maybe um, a friend singing or playing an instrument, you can do that as well. Um, so yeah, cool. That's, that's audio. There's so much you can do with audio. Uh, I can't wait to show you all of that stuff, but let's continue working with MIDI for tonight. So yeah, um, as I mentioned, as we learned last week, MIDI is really great for when you actually want to create something internally within the computer from scratch, whether that's a drum beat, a melody, or a chord progression. And um, so we're going to get straight into making beats because I did a little bit of talking and explaining uh, things last week. And, uh, and I talked for quite a long time. So, so this week, we're just going to get straight into making beats. I asked last week, what type of beat do we want to make? And I'll ask the same, same question again. So uh, for everyone in the chat, everyone following along, what type of beat do we want to make? Do you want to make a house, or we did a house last week, but um, give me a particular maybe genre or style or you know, uh, something to, some, some type of feeling for a beat and we'll work on that. Uh, so we're going to start straight away uh, making beats and kind of, I remember a bunch of different styles uh, that were requested last week. So there was uh, drum and bass, there was also hip hop. Um, I think there was a trap and a dubstep maybe. So um, maybe what, yeah, what we'll do is we'll start off just making beats um, of, of different genres, just so we kind of go over all of the different uh, genres to hopefully cover all the bases. And then, uh, yeah, just, rem just remember how we actually worked with MIDI from last week. So yeah, feel free to add some stuff to the chat there, um, add some suggestions. Or maybe any other questions that, that you've got uh, regarding MIDI or anything that we covered last week or you know, every, anything that you want to know, please keep in mind that this is the Music Is Easy series, so we're, we're going specifically over the, uh, the basics of, of working with MIDI tonight. So try to keep it, the questions focused on that. All right. Um, oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't actually see that. Yeah, uh, comments are changing. Polo, what's up? Ben, Linda, Ali, Clayton, what's going on? Flume did too for his first album. Thanks, uh, thanks, Stephen. Uh, Ali, Kanye. and Kanye. Yeah, Kanye definitely used. Uh, speaking of the microphones, definitely has uh, used. Um, crap quality microphones, but it sounds great, you know. Disclosures, cool. So liquid D and B, so let's do some D and B. <laughs> the D's and B's. All right, let's start out with D's and B's since uh, there was a lot that like drum and bass probably ended up being the second most popular request from last week. We did house music, um, the lane eight deep house. Yeah, okay, we kind of did house last week, but maybe we can just do another, um, another, another, uh, house beat as well tonight. So yeah, drum and bass by far was the well, second most popular. I think there was a lot of house requests at first, but then later on all the drum and bass kind of requests came in. Um, yeah, so let's do some drum and bass stuff. So um, in, the, in the chat for you drum and bass heads out there, um, what tempo do I want to be working at if I'm making drum and bass? So people who are familiar with, with drum and bass music, um, maybe you DJ it already. What temp? What is the typical tempo for drum and bass music? And um, while we're talking about tempo, um, while I wait for those answers, um, yeah, while I wait for those answers, you'll notice up the top left. We we kind of briefly went over it last week talked about the speed or pace of um, the song. So tempo is uh, 
we measure tempo in BPM, which stands for beats per minute, and it's basically just how fast your song travels. It's like the speed of your song, whether it's a fast paced song. So drum and bass is, is, relatively, uh, is relatively fast. It's like a do ka do ka do ka do ka Whereas hit, your classic kind of 90s boom bap hip hop might be like a do do ka do do ka do do ka do do So it's a little bit slower. Um, and then the house, your typical house range might be 120 to 130 beats per minute maybe. So 125 is pretty typical of like that kind of tech house and deep house, I believe. You can call me out if I'm wrong there. But uh, your, your house music's more like do, ka, do, ka. It's like a do, 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 do. So yeah, we see uh, Luke says 172 would be nice, but 174, brother, and lots of... Lots of uh, likes there on that comment. Yeah, Emelyn, um, yeah, 174 to 176, I think is your typical drum and bass speed. I'm no drum and bass aficionado. I know uh, Shock One tuned in last week and maybe he can weigh in on that if he's, if he's back in the, in the chat room tonight. So yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change, up the top left, we're gonna change the, um, the global BPM, it's called. I call it the master tempo. Um, but the global BPM, where it says 120 by default up the top left, we're going to change this to 174. So 174 and enter. Um, we can also click and drag this up and down. So this global BPM at the top um, is, is basically dictates, it's, yeah, it dictates the, what the speed of everything in your track is kind of playing at. Um, so if you're a DJ, you can kind of think of this as your master tempo and every, all of these individual tracks are like the channels, you know, the decks of your, of your mixer, uh, sorry, the decks that are connected to your mixer. And it's like basically having all of those decks on sync and they're all syncing to one master tempo, which is whatever our global BPM in Ableton Live is. So that's if you are coming from a DJ background. If you're not coming from, a D, uh, from any musical background, just know that this number here D basically dictates the speed or pace of our song. So um, yeah, we're going to go to, oh, I, I very accidentally went to half time of um, 174, I believe, which is 87, which is very, I didn't even mean to do that, but 174 is the tempo we're working at. So if I turn on my metronome, this is the speed of, um, this is the speed uh, of a lot of drum and bass music. So, do ka, do ka, do ka, do ka. So that's the kind of beat that we want to be making um, tonight. If if I played it a bit slower, like maybe more at a house at a house tempo, like 125, as I said before, um, the house music is more. Um, yeah. So please don't make memes of me beatboxing into. Um, into Facebook Live, that would be very embarrassing. Uh, and also, uh, if we played a bit slower, like your typical, you know, almost 90s boom, as I said, boom bap uh, hip hop music might be anywhere from like 80 to 100 beats per minute. Um, and so, yeah, this is a lot slower. So, do, do, ka, do, do, ka, do, do, ka, do, do, ka, yeah? So let's go back to 174 and let's make a drum and bass beat. Um, anyone from last week remember where we typically will put our, um, the, these do's and cars are brilliant. Thank you, Emlyn. <laughs> Memes created. Um, yeah, so, uh, where was I? Does anyone remember from last week where we typically want to be putting our, our beats? Our, specifically, I'm talking about our snares or claps. We learned this last week. So what I'm going to do, if you do remember where that is, put that in the chat and I'm just going to find a cool uh, drum instrument to, to kind of work with this drum and bass drum and bass beat. So remember to the left hand side, this is like your toolbox um, of sounds. Um, and we're going to go for a drum rack, which is to the left hand side here. And I'm going to find a, just browse through. So I'm going to click on one and use the down arrow just to browse through the sounds.
So there's a lot to choose from. I'm probably just going to go for one of the basic ones at the top. In future lessons, I will kind of teach you how to um, build your own custom drum racks using your own sounds from scratch so we can make a, a much you know, punchier or, 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 or make, a, make a drum sound at least that's more to specifically to the style that you're trying to make. So I quite like that, that analog four click kit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag this onto my one MIDI track. So by the way, you'll probably notice that um, my Ableton looks quite a lot darker than yours if you're yeah, relatively new to Ableton Live. I prefer to use the dark skin for Ableton. I think it's nicer on the eyes and it just looks cooler. So where you will find that is in the preferences. So command comma again for Mac, control comma for Windows. And up the very top, there's a look field tab and under tracks, uh, color, sorry, uh, under colors, you've got theme and I just use the dark theme. Cool. All right, so how do I become a top fan? Um, I don't know how you become a top fan, Luke. Um, I'm, new, I'm just as new to this as you are. Um, I heard the metronome on Ableton can give you Corona. That wasn't funny, Damien. Nothing, nothing about Ableton Live can give you a Corona. I put the clap on the third quarter of the bar, but not sure. I think I, think I know what you're talking there about there, Clayton, and, and you, you, you've got one of the claps right by the sound of it. So um, f just again from last week to create this beat, what we're going to do is remember each one of these cells here is, has the capacity to store a clip in it. So a, a MIDI clip is what we're about to create on this MIDI track. So remember a MIDI track is kind of, you know, keeping it simple for now is specifically for these software instruments where we can um, compose our own ideas from scratch, whether it's a drum beat or a melody or whatever. Um, so, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to double click in one of these cells and that creates a MIDI clip. So as I said last week, each one of these cells has the capacity to store one clip on it, which is basically a loop. Um, and you can think of each one of these cells as a different idea that you can, that you can use. So I'm going to go back to this. Um, so what I've done is I've just double clicked. That's created my MIDI clip and that's uh, sh shown for me down the bottom section here, uh, my clip view, so MIDI clip view, which actually allows me to input notes into the sound, um, into input MIDI notes into the MIDI clip. So when I hit the, the play button on this clip, you'll notice that, that it's silent. All I'm hearing right now is the metronome, and that's because I've got the metronome on. So all I've got uh, when I hit play now is no metronome even, because I've just turned the metronome off and silence. And remember, that's because when we were when we were actually previewing these sounds, that's not the actual loop, loop that we're going to be working with. That's just a preview of the sounds within that kit. So what we actually have to do is start inputting some notes into this MIDI clip to play those notes. So the way that we do that is we just, is we just double click where we want a note. So typically, if you scroll right down to the bottom, as you can see, I've actually expanded out my MIDI, MIDI clip down the bottom here. And typically you'll find down the very bottom of the uh, very, very bottom of the clip, that's where our kick drum is going to be. If you do want to preview these sounds, like if you don't know what a, a BD, which stands for bass drum, bass drum and SD is snare drum and HH, which is hi-hat, what you can actually do is you can preview them. So just above this piano roll here, so this is meant to be a piano roll, um, just above that, if I click on that little blue icon there, um, we'll get the blue headphones and now when I click on these sounds I can actually preview them before I make them. So typically in most music you'll find a kick drum or a bass drum on the first beat of the bar. So that's uh, this very first uh, column here. And so when I hit play on the uh, clip now you can see when it, whenever the playhead passes over the, uh, the, the clip here that's what happens. So let's turn the metronome on because it's really good to make sure that you're writing your beats and you're writing your ideas um, in time with Ableton's global BPM, Ableton Live's global BPM. And the reason why we want to be doing that is if 
everything is in time with the global BPM, they'll be in time with each other as well. So all of our songs, all of our ideas going on in our, in our track, they're essentially going to be playing in time with each other. So yeah, what we want to be doing is basically be placing a snare drum, which is this one here, the second one up. We're going to be placing a snare drum on the second and fourth beats of the bar. So if I play the, turn the metronome on to play, hear it in time. So, buka, 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 one, two, three, four. So, those tick, ticks and tocks of the metronome that you can hear, those ticks and tocks of the metronome that you can hear right now, um, they're represented by the grid markings 1, 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4. Um, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, tick, tock, 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 tick, tock, tock, tock. Um, so what we basically want is a snare drum on the second and the fourth beats of the bar. So I think this comes back to what you said, Clayton. I put the clap on the third quarter of the bar, but not sure. So let's put a, a, a snare or a clap. So claps and snares are very interchangeable kind of instruments. You can use one or the other or, or even both at the same time. Buka, 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 buka. So we got one of the snares in the, sa in the right place. Um, and just from last week, I'm just going to tell you where it is. There's the other snare you typically will put on the point two. So in the point two and the point four of every bar, that's typically where we want our snares or our claps to go. So let's listen to that. So we need one more kick drum, and that's a do um, for for Emmeline joining in, who particularly likes the uh, the do ka, do's and cars. Uh, I don't have this drum rack on my Ableton. Ah, oh, Emlyn, sorry. I think this might be from one of their packs, possibly. Um, so I, maybe I'll just quickly swap out to a, a drum rack that I know everyone will have quickly. Just going to use a different. Yeah, you can use a different rack as well. I'm f just for everyone watching. Um, yeah, I'm going to swap out to a, a different drum rack, and the way that I'm going to do that, it's actually really simple. I'm going to do this while the drum rack's playing. So while this kit's playing, I'm just going to swap it out. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. I find the easiest way just to drag and drop another sound over the top. So the way that I'm going to do this is while it's playing, I might grab the 606 core kit. Cool. And you can hear that that's now swapped out um, the drum sound for the 606 core kit. If I, and this is that drum rack that, that I'm using right here. Um, the 606 core kit. So this is the instrument and, and you see this whole bottom window here has two different views. So one of the views is going to show you the instrument that's on, on a MIDI track anyway. One of the views is going to show you the instrument that's on the track. So in, the, in this case it's the 606 core kit. And on the other view um, it's, it's going to show you the uh, MIDI clip that we're working on that's on the track. So this is the track view and then this is the clip view. So what's on the track and what's in the clip on that selected track. So another way that you can do it is just double click on the track, so that one 606 core kit, and that will um, show you the, the bottom window there. And if I want to see what's in the clip, I just double click on the clip, and then that shows me what's in the clip, so in the clip view. Um, yeah, so that's, and, and the other way is to click on these two tabs down the bottom. So I'm going to go in the clip view. There's one, one other way other than that, and that's the shift and tab key. And that goes between the two views there. So, um, I want to actually use, I think I want to use a different snare because as you can hear, when I, stamp, when I play that one, it's, it's quite short. So maybe with something with a bit more psh to it, which is that one there. They're pretty much exactly the same. Um, anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use, I'm going to use this one here. So basically what I want to do is I want to move these two snares that I've already created up to the next one. And a really quick and easy way of doing that is I click on the note. So I click on this black note on the piano roll. Click on that. You can see that it highlights, it selects both of those snares in the clip. And then I can just press the up arrow. And now you can see that that's moved those snares up to the next um, note. So you can use the up, arrow, up and down arrows to bump notes up and down to different kind of um, sounds. And you can also use the left and right arrows to move them around. So that's something I really like to do when I'm making drum beats. I'll just kind of keep the the loop looping and while I'm creating notes I'll just move them around with my arrows until I get them to the exact spot that I want them. So we'll do a bit of that in a second. 
So I want that. So let's try put the drum, the kick drum there on 1.3. So that's uh, definitely not, that's not what we want to be, uh, that's not what I had in mind for a drum, for your typical drum and bass, dr drum and bass, drum and bass, drum and bass um, beats. We want more of a do ka do ka Right now we got a do ka do ka do ka do ka So we basically want to shift the kick drum right a little bit. So let's, uh, with this kick drum selected, I'm going to press the right arrow and let's try it there. Feels a little bit weird, um, and yeah, it doesn't feel quite right, especially to what I was uh, kind of beatboxing before. So I press the right arrow again. And that sounds pretty good to me. Cool. So that's your typical drum and, drum and bass pattern right there. Um, and as I said, each one of the, as I said last week, each one of these, I repeated it this week as well, um, each one of these cells here has the capacity to store a different idea on it. So whether you want to double click and create a whole new idea from scratch, which you can do, um, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to hit the, I'm going to click on this one and hit the delete or the backspace key and that's going to delete that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to right click and duplicate this. And now on this second clip here, I've got a new idea that I can start adding to. So I've just basically, what I'm doing is I'm creating mutations or, or just variations of this, um, of this MIDI clip here. And, and these, these different variations are ideas that can be used throughout different sections of your actual song. So let's try different sound. So I'm just going to... Nah. That's pretty cool. So even just that one little addition, then I might go, all right, duplicate again. I'm going to come up with another variation of that. Maybe a different idea, so like a so yeah, um, gonna try do something like that. Hey Drew, hey Andal, how you going? Casino, Bailey, what's up? Rob, Sammy, Gene. So yeah, I've got this kind of drum and bass beat now that's that's coming along. And I guess while while we're here, this this would be a great kind of moment to be able to show you what these little you'll notice that whenever I, I create a MIDI note, so whenever I double click to create a note, um, what these little red markers mean. So these, these are called velocity, I call them velocity poles. I don't know what the technical, they're, they're velocity somethings, but velocity poles make sense because they look like little poles. Um, and maybe Drew can uh, chime in there. He, he might know the exact gene. Josh, what's up? He, he might know the technical term for them, but velocity poles is what we're going to stick with. Um, uh, so yeah, Drew, Drew Mayhells, if he's, if he's uh, joined, feel free to chime in with what exactly the technical term for these velocity poles are. Um, they might even just be called velocity poles, who knows. But what is velocity? Um, so basically, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're working with a, or if you, yeah, if you're working with a drummer and you're recording them and that drummer is hitting a snare drum, um, the harder they hit that snare drum, the louder it's going to play. That's basically what's happening. There's a lot of other acoustic, you know, stuff that's going on there. But uh, one of the most obvious things that's going to happen is that um, the snare is going to play louder. And that's basically what these little red poles represent. 
um, is the velocity or the loudness of the sound. Velocity can be mapped to a whole bunch of other stuff, but most, most of the time, um, so pretty much like 90% of the time, I, I'm guessing that's a wild, that's, I'm not getting my statistics from any, like my numbers from any official source there, but a lot of the time these velocity sources uh, sorry, these velocity poles are just mapped to the volume of that particular hit. So if you want, maybe you want to create like a little bit of a ramp or like a little bit of a shuffling sound, what you might actually do is just adjust the volume of each individual note. So kind of to create this up and down shuffling So let's see what that sounds like. So it kind of has this. So hopefully you can hear that it's going up and down in volume. Um, do I believe velocity poles help with the swing on tracks? It's a great question, Gene. Glad you asked it. Um, yes. Yeah, so. Velocity is a way of adding expression to your MIDI clips. Um, so it, it gives them more ex expression and it maybe, yeah, it, it helps with the kind of feeling of, of the track. And I'm trying not to say swing and groove yet. It's an element of swing and groove, I think. Um, actual swing and groove is defined by the imperfections in timing um, of a of a MIDI note, so you know, no human, this beat that we've got right now, everything is super perfect to the grid. And so no human can play that perfect. Um, so that's, to some people, sounds really great, having a very perfectly quantized beat. Um, to other people, it feels a little bit lifeless. Um, so everyone's a little bit different there, and it's totally, you know, up, it's your personal opinion. Um, but yeah, Swing and groove is, is technically more just, you know, grabbing notes and dragging them intentionally a little bit out of time or actually recording yourself playing these notes in. So um, in future lessons, I'll show you how to, how to actually record yourself playing, whether it's just on your computer keyboard or if you've got like a little cheap MIDI keyboard you can, you can plug in. So um, actually recording your stuff in obviously is going to give you an instant humanized feel. Um, but there is a way that you can achieve swing and groove um, with MIDI. And um, yeah, that's by actually moving those notes off, off the grid intentionally. Uh, you can do that manually or there's a couple of cheap ways of doing that um, as well. And, but yeah, I, I think to answer your question, Gene, it, I think uh, velocity uh, adds, yeah, I guess, yes. To answer your question, yes, it does. It helps. I'm, I'm not sure about Helping is the right word. I, I, I think maybe it adds more to that humanized element um, by not having all of the, uh, all every single sound hitting the exact same volume because that's two things humans just can't do. We can't play perfectly, like 100% perfectly to the grid. I'm sure there's drummers out there that can get very close, but if you zoomed right in, you'll find that those notes aren't perfectly to the grid. Um, and another thing that we can't do is hit the same snare, like, you know, the snare drum twice at the exact same volume. We can hit it pretty close, but not exactly the same. So yeah, um, changes in, in velocity and, you know, adjusting notes off the grid definitely add to that humanized element. And swing and groove is definitely genre dependent. Some genres and some particular songs will stick 100% to the grid, especially, you know, music that uh, typical EDM style DJs want to play because they want it to be nice and easy to mix. If you've got diff two different songs with notes that are off the grid, it can be quite hard to mix and you'll get a lot of like, kind of like double, like doo -doo 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 -doo. but um, other, other genres of music and other uh, people just prefer to have a more kind of um, human, uh, human feeling beat. So, and, and personal preference and genre dependent. So great question. Um, cool. All right. So we got this beat now. And we've, so we've got a few different variations. And then I'll play the next one. And I might actually keep that going, this little tom hi-hat on this one. 
So that's on 1.2.3 on this beat. And so that feels like it's kind of evolving. And so this could be like your intro of the song. And then after four bars, you add this one element just to make it feel like it's moving forward a little bit. And then actually something that I maybe want to do is make this 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 loop here a little bit longer so as you can see right now every single loop is only one bar so when I hit play one two three four one two three four one two three four so every four beats it just this it re cycles back again so I might want to like I, I'm, I'm thinking this is a cool little idea but maybe I want to vary it from bar to bar so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move my mouse over to the left here and you can see that I've got duplicate loop. So if I duplicate the loop, it's now a two bar loop. So you can see the loop is on. So if, if loop was off, I just play the, the clip and when it gets to the end, and then it just stops. So if I want it to continuously loop, I want to have loop on and you can see the loop length is two bars. So I'm thinking like it goes So pretty much what it's doing now. So maybe like if I turn, if I del delete this one, here's a little tip for everyone as well, by the way, uh, zero is a really good key to just be able to try things on and off without deleting them. So I could delete it if I wanted to, and that's going to create a space there. Um, but I'm going to command Z or control Z to undo that. And I'm just going to press zero because I'm not hundred percent sure I want to delete it. So I'm going to press zero and you can see that deactivates the clip. So it kind of mutes it. So we can't hear it. And so what I'm going to do now is like, that's not quite, still not quite exactly what I had in my head. So I want to zoom in a little bit. And right now my, my, um, MIDI, my MIDI clip resolution is 1 16th, which means there's a total of, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So there's 16 possible notes per bar. Um, but I'm thinking that I'm going to have to zoom in. So um, I'll move just move this to the right and see if that's right. Oh no, that's actually what I wanted there. So that's what I had in my head. So that's what I had in my head. But if I did want to try zoom in and make a slightly because you can see right now, I've only got the option of here or here, but if I wanted to have something in between there, I could zoom in. And the way that I can zoom in is if I'm using a trackpad, I can just like do the, the pinch to like with two fingers. So, you know, pinch to zoom thing. So pinch to zoom. And now you can see, oh, I think I've got a fixed grid on. Why do I have a fixed grid? So as I zoom in, so right click on the grid and it should by default be set to an adaptive grid of narrow, which means the grid adapts as you zoom in, zoom in. So as I zoom in, this grid is now one over 32 down the bottom here. So I can now move this. Yeah, cool. But that's not exactly what I had in my head. It was actually this. So, which is just 16 anyway. So maybe just for now, just leave like whatever your grid is set to just leave, like just practice making beats. Hopefully it's at one over 16, which is, uh, 16th beats and there's a very kind of common resolution to write drum beats at um, But yeah, maybe just for now stick to that to keep it nice and simple Okay, so as as I mentioned at the start of this session um, Last week we looked at we, we pretty much did this uh, we looked at um, uh, This this particular view here, which is called session view and so basically in session view, we've got all of our tracks. So all individual tracks, this is one track that I'm working with right now, which is a drum beat laid, like laid over the top of one another or just side by side, sorry. They're laid out horizontally next to each other. So each track you can think of as a different layer. So we could have another track and this one could be specifically for bass sounds and then another track. And this one could be specifically for piano sounds and then another track, um, maybe an audio track this time. And this audio track could be for vocals that we record, whether it's again on our internal microphone or one built into our headphones or a proper studio microphone. 
So each one of these tracks represents like a different layer of your song. Um, and as I said at the start of this session and last week, this, is, this view that we're working in right now, this window that we're working in is called uh, session view. And session view, as you've probably gathered, is a pretty great way of being able to quickly lay down a few different ideas pretty fast. You can just double click in a cell to create a MIDI clip and then start creating notes in that MIDI clip. Um, there is another very popular way of working in Ableton Live, um, and that's called Arrangement View. So right now we're in Session View. Um, we're, gonna, we're about to migrate all of these, these three um, loops here that I've made. We're about to migrate all of this over into a different view called Arrangement View. And this is how a lot of people like to work as well. So um, this is kind of like, this view that we're working in right now is, is a nice simple way of, of getting ideas started and, and a lot of people do like working with it. It's kind of like Ableton's patented uh, view in a way. Um, you can think, as again, you can think of it as like an ideas view. Um, but then the other view, which is up the top right here, we've got the vertical view. So these three dots here, are your, this is your vertical session view. So as you can see, tracks are vertical and um, side by side horizontally. We've got our other view, which is this horizontal way. And this is called your um, arrangement view. So the arrangement view you can think of more as a timeline. One of the big things that people freak out about when they're working in session view is there is no, they go, okay, cool, but where does the song start and end? And you can kind of arrange your song um, vertically. So if I was to just quickly create a bass sound, and I'm drag and dropping this into this blank space where it says drop files and devices here, Ableton instantly, instantly knows, okay, cool, that's a, um, that's a MIDI track, so I'm gonna, that's a MIDI instrument, so I'm gonna uh, instantly create a MIDI track. So, oops, it's a bit high, I'm gonna scroll down a bit. That's not the key that drum and bass is usually in, it's usually F, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. So maybe go down to F0. Oh, a bit too low. It's a pretty bad sound, but this is just to give you an example. So, but basically on the master track, you can see scene one, scene two, scene... So these are your scenes, and basically um, with this uh, play button here, this is going to play all of the clips in that uh, specific row. So if I click that, and now I might maybe duplicate this. And then I play, click play on two. So you can see that each one of, each one of these is gonna trigger a different idea, it's like a different uh, row of clips to play. And um, yeah, so some people really like working in this view, and if this view makes sense to you, that's awesome. Uh, I would uh, say stick stick with this view. But um, I, I've noticed probably a lot more of the people that I teach do prefer the arrangement view from start to finish, and uh, Ableton's probably not going to like me for saying that because this is yeah their special view. But uh, um, a lot of the students that I that I teach definitely prefer this view. I'm someone who kind of definitely starts and finishes all of my ideas from start to finish in the arrangement view. This is kind of your classic, um, uh, your classic door view. So, you know, all of Ableton's main competing uh, software doors, such as, you know, Logic, Cubase, Pro Tools, FL Studio, GarageBand even, they're, they're very much based around this workflow of a start to finish linear timeline way of structure of working. And I think that is a lot more a lot more comfortable for some people to kind of grasp the concept of because there's a clear start and a clear end. Whereas when you're working in session view, everything's just an infinite loop and there's no particular start or finish. This is, by the way, this is also a really great view for performing live in. So kind of like imagining that each one of these different clips is a different idea and you can almost perform or like DJ them together, which is really fun. 
Um, but yeah, this is a good idea. This is a good view for us. And, and really, I'll, I'll start again there. Um, this is a great view for a lot of people. Uh, session view, people love it because it's super quick and easy to work with. Um, and it's a really great view for putting your ideas together in. Um, arrangement view is your other main view and a lot of people do prefer arrangement view as well. It, there is no right and wrong. One of the big things to remember when it comes to making music is that it's an art form, it's not a science. So there is no such thing as right and wrong. There's no one that can ever, as long as you like what you're making, as long as you can back it and you say, hey, I like this, this is pretty cool. As long as you can think that, no one will ever be able to tell you that it's wrong. Um, so, and, and that comes down to the, the different ways you use the program to make music as well. Um, so part of making music is about finding the, the process that makes the most sense to you. So, you know, Luke, I'm not sure if he's still, he might be getting ready for his, um, he might be getting ready for his live stream now, but if he's still in the chat room, he's, you know, recently found uh, working with hardware really works for him. And he, he really likes a different uh, music making software called Serato Studio for working on his ideas. And that makes the most sense to him. So, you know, music making is not meant to be hard. It's actually quite easy. It's, that's why this series is called Music is Easy. Um, and uh, it's really just about finding the process that is the least, um, intimidating so when you open up a track it's almost like you're playing a computer game as opposed to being overwhelmed by all of the different options available to you i'm just going to quickly get to the comments and then we'll finish up by going moving into arrangement view um adds emphasis to certain notes give them a little human feel um liam i've never used ableton but it eventually want to try it out what benefits does it have over fl um, probably just the fact that it's an actual music making software, unlike FL. Um, this, will this be uploaded to YouTube later? Yep, Clayton uh, will be uploading uh, this to YouTube. The, uh, the last week's is on YouTube as well, and we're also going to be um, uploading to YouTube uh, the, like the highlights reel, so you can kind of just get all the good stuff without me just talking randomly to people in, in the chat. Hey, Michael. Hey, Brett. How are you going? Um, Thanks for whoever's replying on behalf of uh, Lab 6 as well, by the way. Um, Mitch, Greg, what's up? Peter, uh, there's some differences such as the lo how the channel system works instead of routing. Yes. Uh, Joel Smith definitely, yeah, cool. All right, sweet. So. Um, as I said, there's another very popular kind of way of making music, and that is uh, in arrangement view. Um, and I'll kind of migrate everything over to arrangement view, and then I'll show you why I like to work in it. So there's a, as I said, I kind of start my ideas from scratch in this view most of the time. I'm I've got an Ableton push to, and so and the push to workflow is very much kind of focused around. Uh, session view. So I'm kind of warming up to this view at the moment, uh, but it'll be a while before I'm completely converted over. Um, and uh, yeah, for, for the most, for the time being, I'm still very much uh, into this arrangement view way of working, which is a bit old fashioned, I know, but whatever. Um, so I'll show you if you've got, if you've got ideas um, in this view, by the way, I'm hitting the tab key to go between the two, two different views. So tab is the shortcut between the two views if you don't want to be clicking on these two uh, icons here. So um, yeah, what was I, where was I? So there's a couple of ways you can migrate all of your clips from session view into arrangement view. One easy way is to do a con command A or control A to select all, or I can just click and drag to highlight all the notes. I can click on the, the top clip here and you can see that's like I'm clicking and dragging it around as if to move it around. And then I can just hit the tab key and drop it straight onto this view. So that's, that's option A. Another option is if you do like to work in this view, so this is, as I said, this is the session view and this is a really great way to kind of perform your tracks in. Um, so what you might wanna do is go, all right, I've come up with all my different ideas and loops and I've figured out kind of how I want my song structure to be. And so what I wanna do now is I wanna record this um, into my arrangement view, so then I can go into arrangement view afterwards and just kind of neaten it up and finalize the edit um, so it's like a finished product, finished song. So I'm going to show you that way now as well. So what I want to basically do is I want to um, turn my push off so this 
turns off, hopefully. Now I'm going to turn my other keyboard off. Turn that off there. There we go. So I want record arm off on the tracks. And uh, what I'm going to do is hit the master uh, record up the top here. So when I, I'm going to get this track ready to play. I'm going to hit the space bar. And then I'm just going to hit record. And you can see when I move over to this view, that's actually being recorded into my arrangement view here. So maybe go. And then I might go to the. Cool. And so now when I move over here, so I hit the tab key, I hit space to stop the recording. So remember spaces to play and to stop at the same time. And I hit the tab key to move into arrangement view. And now you can see um, that uh, I've got, what I've just played there has all been recorded into the arrangement view, which is really great. This arrangement view means that I can now like edit this and refine it and tweak it into a finished kind of final product. Um, but you can kind of see that these are grayed out a little bit as well. So to fix that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little play thing up the top here. And you can see that um, in, my, in my info window to the bottom left here, this little info view, if I hover my mouse over this red button, it says back to arrangement. So when I click on this, it's going to basically move all of my clips into arrangement view. So now when I hit play, you'll see in my Clip in my session view, all of, none of these are playing. I can delete them if I wanted to, and I can move completely over to um, arrangement view. Cool. So to, to kind of finish, to round this session up, um, what I'm going to do is kind of show you, if you do prefer to work in a, if you'd, I, I'd, I'd recommend over the week, um, you know, practicing and experimenting with MIDI keep working in arrangement view. Oh, sorry, keep working in session view, see how that goes. And then I'm gonna show you how, if you want to, you can start and finish your ideas completely from scratch uh, in arrangement view as well. This is one of the perks I find to, two of the, actually two of the things I really like about working with arrangement view is, one, it's a, you know, a start to finish style timeline. It's a bit more linear, so, you know, um, it's not, Europeans are a little bit more ex, uh, experimental and, and Ableton is a European company. So they're, they're fine with, you know, coming up with these really uh, experimental uh, ways of thinking and ways of creating, which is really awesome. But I think, you know, um, a lot of people kind of prefer, especially new people uh, to music making, to definitely prefer this linear timeline way of working where, you know, you've got start to finish. So down the bottom of the timeline, you've got your minutes and seconds, which is convenient. Up the top, you've got your bars. So this shows you when you're at bar 41. And you can see when I click on bar 41 on the grid, um, my transport bar at the top tells me that I'm at bar 41. So it actually says where I am in the song. When I hit the space bar, that's where it plays from. So wherever you have selected in this arrangement view, that's where it's going to play from whenever you hit space. So what I'm going to do is you can see that on the top of uh, this clip here, when I use my mouse, my mouse turns into like this Mickey Mouse hand. So I'll click on that and that selects that whole clip. So it's going to play from the start of that selection now. So I actually want to create uh, maybe a new MIDI clip from, from scratch. I'm going to maybe delete this analog because it's not very good, to be honest. Also, for the person that I kind of made a dig at FL about, uh, uh, that was a complete joke. Um, there's definitely, you can look up online the differences between Ableton and FL, but at the end of the day, they're both, both doors. They both work on the kind of premise of MIDI versus audio. So, um, you know, as I said last week, MIDI and audio are the two most important file types to understand. And once you have a good grasp of how they work, 
you're on your way to making music and pretty much all of these software doors from Ableton Live to FL um, to Logic, they're all pretty much based on the similar kind of concept of you're making tracks with MIDI and audio. So it doesn't really matter which one you're, you're working on. Um, so I apologize for that dig if you were offended. Um, anyway, uh, okay, cool. So let's just pick another sound. Maybe I'm gonna make one from scratch, give you like a little uh, sneak peek at just, just how, uh, you know, how flexible this, this soft Ableton is and how much you can just, you know, design your own sounds from scratch. So I might go, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, this is, Able, this is Wavetable, which is a software synth by Ableton. It's a really good one too. Um, I'm gonna highlight the area. So the, the way that we create a clip in um, Ableton is we double click the cell and that automatically creates a clip that we can start editing. It's not that simple in, um, sorry, in session view. Um, it's not that simple in arrangement view. In arrangement view, we can double click, but it only creates a clip as long as the, um, as long as the, 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 the grid is kind of, you know, the, the width of the grid. And when we duplicate this, when we extend this out, you can see that it, it just makes lots of little short loops there. So it's not exactly what we want. What I wanna do is I wanna create a four bar loop. So between bars one and five, that's four bars. So what I do is I click and drag and highlight on the grid. And that's basically showing Ableton where I wanna create this MIDI clip. Um, the shortcut is Shift Command M or Control Shift M for Windows. Um, or I can just right click in this highlighted area and go insert MIDI clip. Once again, we have a, a MIDI clip and you can see that it's the full four bar length. I'm even gonna loop this. So you can see up here, I've got my loop um, kind of play bar and my loop bar. And I can move this to the start. So it's between bars one and five. I can extend it and shorten it. Otherwise I can also just click on the top here, select the clip and go command L. And that will turn on the loop section at the top here. So up the top in the transport bar, we've got our loop and we can drag this to the left and then shorten this as well and now it's loops and so now we're in here we can basically just start playing around with notes so i'm gonna maybe go too high i'm gonna go down to f1 Dun, 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 dun. So as you can see, I'm just spamming spacebar to get it to play again and again. Dun. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. Cool, that sounds cool. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, start to edit this and make a kind of classic, almost drum and bass style Reese bass. And this is just a, this is a bit more advanced, so I'm not really gonna explain this too much. Uh, this is just to show you how you can actually completely synthesize your own sound from scratch.
I don't really like that, so I'm going to get rid of that. And that's a pretty average uh, bass line, but yeah, you could kind of maybe add a bit of glide to it as well. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so that's another way that you could work with MIDI. So, and, and that's in a range of view where you can actually see one of the beauty, the perks of it I like about perks of you know working with MIDI is that you can actually see all of the waveforms and all of the MIDI clips. Um, not MIDI, sorry. I'm going to start that again. One of the things I really love working about working with arrangement view is uh, the fact that you can see all of the clips laid over one another. You can see exactly when an idea is about to kind of come in. So you can see exactly when stuff's going to come in. If it's an audio clip, uh, you can actually see the waveforms laid over the top. So if I was to maybe grab an audio sample loop, um, perk loops and try to find something around there. Some document one loops. You can actually see all of your clips laid over the top of one another and just you can drag and drop them and move them around, um, which is what I really like working with Arrangement View for you. There's a start to finish linear style timeline um, and you can see everything laid over the top of one another, which is really great. So that's probably all that I have time for tonight. Um, what I will quickly say, just remind you is like, just as a reminder, if you want to be working in this view, you can completely start ideas from start to finish in this view. Just remember that all you have to do is you highlight the area, you right click it, you insert the MIDI clip, and then it's just the same kind of uh, procedure down in this view. So you just kind of hit play, you can see the playhead passing, and as it pass, plays over notes, I can highlight all these notes, duplicate them, so Command D. So highlight the notes, make sure you highlight the full bar there, Command D to duplicate. Cool. So maybe we'll do after this um, just one more session on MIDI. We might make uh, we'll do, move on to a different genre. So feel free to add your genres uh, that you want to make the beat of in the in the chat. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll work on work on a different different style of beat next week. One more one more session on MIDI. Um, so. We'll make a beat and maybe focus a little bit more next week. We'll make the beat really fast and then focus a little bit more next week um, on, on melody. So coming up with melody with your beats. And uh, yeah, we'll focus completely on arrangement view. So I think you've had a good dose of uh, session view and a nice little introduction into arrangement view. Um, so yeah, next week we'll focus specifically on arrangement view. If you've got any suggestions that you want to add, feel free to add them um, to the chat. And what else? Our Facebook group. So feel free to, I'll just post the link to our Facebook group. So that's where we'll be posting questions and ideas for what you want to add to the, um, of what you want to add to the, to the chat. 
Oh, sorry, uh, to the live stream. Sorry, I'm trying to multitask right here. I suck at multitasking. So I'm going to the groups. I'm going to copy and paste the link for the group into this. So feel free to join the group. It's a open group to, and that's where we're going to talk about. Um, we're gonna, I'm posting a bunch of stuff. So we'll, we'll do polls in there of like, what things do you want covered in these sessions? Um, and yeah, we'll also post like any maybe samples and stuff we create in future lessons. We'll uh, post that in the group for you to be able to download them. So I posted like the synth thing from the synth lab on um, synth sound we made on Friday night in that group. So you can actually download it and use it. So we made the Rufus to Soul, um, you were right, baseline thing. Uh, so you can download that in there in the Facebook group. So I just posted the group in the in the chats there. So definitely check that out. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking in the future one, like once once we get everyone to a point of you know, being able to make beats. I'm thinking maybe in two weeks time. So not the next one, the one after what we'll do is we'll do a whole session just on MIDI. But what I'll get everyone to do is actually post um, ideas that they've been working on to me. So actually send your ideas to me. And um, we'll do like a live collaboration. And we'll just see if we can make uh, a track together based on everything that we've we've made in the collaboration um so yeah thanks everyone for joining in thanks M. thanks justin thanks fran <laughs> thanks for the do's in the cut do ka do ka yep uh also uh if you want to kind of uh keep the party going tonight well not that this was a party this is more a, a lesson i'm sure it's not nearly as fun as uh luke's channel i'm just going to go to twitch and uh Copy the link for Luke's Sounds of Isolation. Sounds. Someone's uh, playing. Okay, I don't know what that was. Anyway, uh, I'm going to copy this. Hey, this is what Luke's playing right now. I'm posting that in the in, this in the chat. So yeah, thanks, thanks for tonight. Thanks, Hannah. Thanks, Paulo. Cheers. Keep up the great work. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Sam. Um, yeah, so I'm done for tonight. This has been awesome. I think I think these will get better. This is obviously only our second Music Is Easy, so I'm still getting the hang of live streaming. But any feedback you've got for me, let me know. Um, yeah, uh, Luke is playing over in the Sounds of Isolation channel, Twitch channel, a uh, bit of tech house tonight. So nice soundtrack for your Wednesday night, the hump day. Cool. Thanks, Amber. Streaming UK Garage. Yeah, nice. I'm listening to it right now. I'm not sure if you can, oh, I think you can probably hear it as well. So this is Luke's channel playing right now. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that. that. Thanks so much, everyone. See ya.